Cheers, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Lise and I just got done with dinner. She had some tuna and olive oil, and I had cookies and ice cream. Not because I'm running low on food, but because it's the only thing in my house right now that I didn't have to spend time cooking. Anyway, today, what I wanted to do is take this line art that I did in the previous video and turn it into a painted image. So, uh, you guys can come along with me as I do that. I'll put the speed painting up here and you can see the process. And remember, I'm just learning this process as we go. So I'm not necessarily uh, tutorializing this because as you'll see probably pretty quick, I've got as much to learn as anybody. This is me just trying to get better at this and bringing you guys along for the ride. So let's have some fun. Ready bees? All right, let's do it. Okay, to start off, you can see we're brought up to speed. In the last video, I had not completed the feet on Coagulat there, so before starting the video today, I went ahead and penciled in the feet and then inked them in. Uh, and then uh, just threw a quick painted background on. I wanted some sort of sick, necrotic, bilious colors uh, just to sort of set the tone for this. And um, what I'm doing here is going in and setting the base color for everything. I'm trying to give it a fleshy tone. I'm pretty sure I wanted uh, Crudge on top there to be kind of pink and soft while Quagulat was a slumbering hulk. Uh, not to say he isn't also soft in parts, but um, I wanted Crudge to be uh, sort of a, a taskmaster that once he loses his slave is really helpless. Uh, but still, as I started laying in some of these colors, I realized... I was really working with too many colors, even though the hue of these weren't too far off, they were just too far afield from each other. So rather than decide on which color I wanted everything to be, I, I went and started putting in different colors for different body parts to see, just live with them a little bit in front of my eyes and see which one I liked the best. And um, while I waited to kind of let my brain process that on one side, I, I went ahead and did the flats on the the metal and industrial parts on Quagulat here. <clears throat> and uh, this was just going to be simple grays, so that was easy enough to figure out what I wanted here. Not a lot of decision making, just a lot of minute painting and getting in there. And you'll notice too, as I go through this, I am moving pretty fast. I'm not worrying too much about staying inside the lines. I kind of just make fast strokes and I can always go back and erase any egregious spills over the line that are really drawing the eye. But, you know, for the most part, what I'm going for is a uh, sort of a kinetic feel to the brush strokes. When you go from drawing to line art, you really, it's it's one form of thinking where you're trying to be very precise and you're very close to the artwork you're trying to like even for example drawing the little muscle detail drawing little bolts and the rivets and the the fingernails and stuff like that when you can really suffer from myopia on your project because you're so close to it up up in the details the whole time and when you're painting the hard part is to remember to do almost the opposite of that to step way back pretty much the whole time be leaning back on the image and see it for its fullness otherwise you're going to start picking the wrong colors and you're going to start filling in details much faster than you want to and really the point of this first pass is to just get basic block colors in so here i'm kind of deciding that i want everything to be not green or not too far afield from what i know needs to be some pink fleshy tone in here but even at that i'm starting to realize i didn't want crudge to be all pink so eventually I turn him sort of ashen gray, and the only shot of pink coming out of this would be then uh, his intestine, and we'll get to that in a bit. And here, uh, like I said, I like to do um, broad swaths in painting, but when you get down to this sort of stuff, you are kind of forced into smaller, minute details just because the structure itself needs to be not so chaotic when you're talking about mechanical stuff. You want it to be pretty well defined. So I spent some time doing that and I realized one mistake I made in my artwork here was in having that big uh, sledgehammer with the spikes coming out of it overlap the leg. They're both highly detailed 
items in their own right. They're both pretty cool and they both kind of deserve their own space. So if I were to go back and do this drawing again, I would give it a lot more kinetic energy. I would foreshorten that arm coming out at the user a lot more and make this more of an action shot as opposed to just a character design shot. Um, I would foreshorten that. I would give the leg its own space. I wouldn't let those two items overlap uh, and just give a little bit more life. But the flip side of that sort of aesthetic uh, with the foreshortening and the, the energy is that if, let's say you're a 3D modeler for a video game and somebody hands you a piece of art, you don't necessarily want the action shot. You want a static image where you can tell what's going on with the creature that you've just been handed so that you can go in and model it accurately as opposed to, you know, this really dynamic image that the artist was trying to convey uh, this is more of a creature design aesthetic as opposed to, you know, an action shot. So um, it's really how I approached it from the beginning. As you can see here, I start to get uh, done with the block colors, and I go into the second layer, and what I do is I just pick the color that I was blocking in, and then I reduce the uh, reduce how bright it is in the color picker there to the right. I just drop it down until it's slightly darker, and then I go in and I darken in the spots that would have shadow on them. I'm trying to have the light source kind of come from above and to what would be their left, our right. And uh, there's also going to be some reflected light coming off the ground that I will get to on a later pass in the highlights pass. But for now, I just wanted to block out a lot of the shapes that the line art doesn't cover. The line art will hint at shapes, but the shadows will, will fold around those shapes and fully define them. And that is the challenge, of course, when you're going in and doing the shadow work on the painting, is making sure that you keep the geometry of everything in place and uh, you don't lose or you don't take away from some of the detail you want. You make sure that everything you do enhances that detail. So I'm just trying to go through my anatomy lessons and trying to remember where all the muscle creases are. And I get through for that first pass, and now I'm going back through on a second pass of darkening and I did the same thing I just took the base color and I darkened it further so that we've got two different gradations or gradations of darkness leading into the shadows and so I go into the more heavily shadowed spaces these shadows are smaller but darker and tighter and uh, they're not going to find as many homes on this creature uh, but they will help define and bring out some of the competing shapes like crudge over the top of Coagulat. If you put in some real dark shadow, it really will make crudge pop back out of him. This will also help define some of the flatness of the steampunk gear that he's got coming out of him uh, once I start approaching those. But I really wanted to stick with the main fleshy tones here because I was kind of in that mode and finish those out before moving on to any of the more, well, I guess what I would consider more challenging stuff, the angular stuff and the, the steampunk um, steampunk attachments there. So going in, doing the gums, trying to get uh, a good color for the mouth that uh, eventually will kind of tell the tale of his throat receding into the distance. Now, I took Crudge and I turned him into, like I said, an ashen gray sort of pale creature, but I wanted that pink umbilical slash intestine running between his stomach and Coagulat's brain to just look raw and fleshy like it has just been extruded from a living, breathing body. And there it sits. So I got my pink, and uh, it's definitely gross enough for my liking. Um, just going through and blocking in the first layer of shadow for crudge here. And... Uh, trying to not shadow his face too much and still keep his maniacal look, but understanding that the light is coming from kind of on the other side of his face there. Now I'm going in the second layer on crudge, just making sure everything is a lot darker, a lot more of the muscle definition that is there starts to come out. And uh, a lot of the more dimensionality of the drawing will start to come out and it won't look so flat. And uh, that's a kind of a item of faith you got to have when you're looking at your own line art after you've taken it from pencils. Uh, and in my case, when I had done it, it was pretty heavily shaded. 
to a line art with no shading and you just have to trust that you're going to know what to do with it when it comes to the painting stage and I didn't trust that like I said this is not something I do a lot but I had a few tricks up my sleeve that I figured would work and so now I'm just doing some of the tedious shading the small detail shadows that are going to go into this the little rivets the screws the pistons things like that um definitely had to uh fight through this part fight through the boredom a little bit because it's a lot of repetitive motion and kind of same angles and shapes and uh you know that's really the difference between some good artists and some great artists is just their capacity to pay attention to stuff like this and uh boy i tell you as i've gotten older my capacity for attention span is well, not what it used to be, but uh, all told, I would say this project took me, well, I probably spent three hours on the initial sketch. I wouldn't have spent that much time had I known I was just going to go straight to line art with it. But the line art probably took an hour and a half or so, maybe two hours. And then this final painting um, probably took about five hours when I include some of the file management and some of the uh, brush discovery and just little things like getting the file set up, getting ready to paint. So, oh, geez, I lost the math. So was that five? Seven, about 10 hours all told putting in this thing. Uh, so at this point, um, I'm just trying to work fast so that I know that I'll get to an end with this thing. I didn't want to lose my attention span and lose the thread. Uh, so I'm working through it. And just finding those darker shades that complement these grays. And it's not that hard. You just keep going down the, the shade line and adding layer after layer. And really, you can do that as many times as you want. I mean, you can have five different gradations of a shade color. I basically went with three, maybe four, to get to, into the really dark stuff with this. But uh, some of the really great artists that just spend so much time on this they'll oh my gosh the time they spend blending every little section the time they put into a painting I mean they're really good and who am I to say they shouldn't do that but just for me personally to put that much time into a single project I find you would have almost a diminishing return after a point I, I feel like you'll get better doing this if you push through and create more quantity as opposed to burning yourself out trying to achieve a quality you might not even be capable of yet on any one drawing and granted you do have to be able to if you're gonna put time in you're gonna do it you may as well do it right but um the problem is right is so subjective uh and a lot of artists fall into this trap where they seek this perfection and they make perfection the enemy of the good or the good enough and as I consider this a learning process, I was definitely fine with the good enough. I just wanted to see where my skill set was at. You know, can I find the colors I want? Can I create a three-dimensional object out of the colors I have? And I uh, really wanted to find what are going to be the main obstacles to my further learning. And I didn't just want to get bogged down. And what I'm finding is the things I'm really going to need to work on in the future are, uh, like I said, composition as far as not having some pieces overlap others. Make sure I get the feet drawn. Uh, don't just run out of page space. Just make sure the page goes on a little longer. Um, I need to work on sort of color picking right from the get-go. And I should also work on using less colors. I mean, I don't have a lot of colors here. I reduced the amount of colors that I used from the initial. I probably got one, two, three, you know, four base colors. But even still, if I can get that down to three colors, period, um, I feel like I will have truly mastered the art of self-limiting. And a lot of my best work, whether I'm doing music or art or writing or anything, it's really the limitations 
that set you free. These are the lattice work that you build your creativity on. Otherwise, if you're just given an entire universe of choices, you can be paralyzed by choice. What's the right thing to do here? What's the right thing to do there? I could do a million different things. Am I going to want to go back and do this? But if you set parameters for yourself and you stick to those, that is a wonderful platform that you can grow your creativity on any project. Uh, anyway, forgive that little tangent. What I'm doing here in the painting now is going through and doing some of the highlights. I've done some of the real dark darks, and uh, now I'm trying to put in the lightest lights, and that's going to be the places where light reflects. And you can give uh, different surfaces and textures a completely different feel depending on how you work with the highlights. You can give them sort of what's called an ambient occlusion, which is how light bounces off and through and from underneath different surfaces and textures. It's an important concept, especially in 3D rendering uh, for computers, but uh, it bears mentioning when you start getting into coloring and painting because it's an important part of understanding just what things are made out of textures in reality and how they bend and move light. And so what I'm doing here is just filling in the hardware, trying to give it some uh, kind of steampunk colors, some muted colors that aren't going to compete with the rest, and uh, let it stand out a little on its own. I strapped the leg there in a bunch of gold bands and ribbons, and or brass rather, and I just wanted those to match you know, some of the other jewelry and staples hanging off the creature. Then I go in and try and just give it a little bit of background, a little ground shadow. wasn't quite loving how everything was coming together with the background and everything. And um, so I kind of left it and went back and just did some extreme highlight and s some extreme dark on some of the parts that were giving me trouble earlier. wasn't quite sure what direction to go with all of this hardware. And then um, just go finish up, make sure everything's basically where I want it, and then I pick a different color for the background, something that'll just bring it all out. Green seemed proper, kind of a necro sort of color. Give some spikes to the leg there as it scrapes across the ground, and just give some muscle and or some uh, highlight and shadow to the muscle texture underneath there. And uh, finish up the mouth. Uh, you'll notice I didn't have any line art in the mouth, but uh, it really brings on a lot of texture when you just go and put some color in. And then uh, put some reflection in the eyes. The eyes say it all. Coagulates pain and crudges sadism. I think uh, it's all there. And uh, with that, I save it. And that is the finished product. Well, there it is, uh, Crudge and Coagulat, all painted up. And I probably could have spent many more hours on this, trying to refine it, get a little more perfect, work on some of my flaws. And uh, even as I look at it now and step back, I can still see things I should have done differently or would have done differently if I were a little better at this. But uh, you know what? I think that just working fast and trying to keep your pace up and trying to keep your productivity up is more important at least in the stage that I'm at where I'm learning than uh, getting everything exactly perfect, especially when you're just doing art for yourself. So mostly the best part was I, I had a really good time doing it. I was able to pass another day in quarantine and not go insane. Well, not quite insane. I did have cookies for supper, but yeah. Well, anyway, I'm just gonna finish this whiskey and uh, post the drawing and uh, Bees and I will wish you a happy quarantine day. Have a great weekend, everyone. Talk soon.